Okay, so in this video we're looking at um, metal oxides or creating metal oxides by burning metals in oxygen. We're going to uh, hopefully come across two things. We're going to come across uh, the differing reactivity of metals and we're going to use them, uh, the, the way these things react to uh, show the difference. And the second thing we're going to do is uh, see just some of these things burning in oxygen and, and observe the reactions that take place and what we end up with. So the first thing we're going to look at is some copper. Now copper is a, a sort of orangey colour. Where's the camera? There it is. Alright, copper is a sort of orangey colour. I'll show you that on the spoon, uh, on the spatula. It's a sort of brownie orange. Okay, and we're going to use um, uh, a kind of fancy spoon thing here. Okay, called a deflagrating spoon. If I just tap that onto there. Now I've got a jar here, okay, of oxygen gas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit this spoon inside this jar of oxygen gas, okay, and uh, as I do so, um, I'm going to, well, I'm going to set it on fire or attempt to, um, and then I'm going to let it burn in the oxygen. So here's copper. Okay, copper, um, I'm just going to heat this up, um, see if I can get my uh, copper to react with the oxygen, and once it starts to react with the oxygen, I can remove the lid here um, and place it into the pure oxygen. You might see a couple of little uh, flecks of green um, coming out, that's just a tiny bit of the copper burning. Copper burns with a green flame. So let's see if we can get this up here. Okay, so copper is pretty unimpressive. Um, it, it does react. Okay, and it's uh, reacting with the oxygen here. Now, it, copper doesn't burn in oxygen. I'll show you here, that copper we started with was nice and orange, and this copper we've ended up with is, uh, is blackened, okay? So uh, copper and oxygen, pretty unimpressive, okay? Um, it doesn't burn in oxygen, okay, but it will react with the oxygen to produce copper oxide, um, which is black in colour. Okay, uh, next up we are going to have a look at... Zinc. No, we're going to have a look at iron first instead. Okay, so here's iron. I'm actually going to use some iron wool. Okay, um, and uh, I'm going to set fire to my iron wool, and then I'm going to place it into another jar of oxygen. Set it on fire first, really. Okay, so uh, you'll notice that this one actually does burn in oxygen and in the air. <coughs> And as I place it into the um, gas jar, hopefully you can see it burns really, really, really quite quickly. And that is because of the um, large surface area. Okay, so that was iron wool. Okay, you can see now it's uh, already formed that black iron oxide all over it there. Okay, and again, it's quite a lot of water um, showing, the, uh, showing the burning is coming there. Very good. Um, right, next up I've got another gas jar of oxygen and this time I'm going to use zinc metal and another uh, deflagrating spoon. Okay, so zinc is a grey powder, you can see that there. Okay, so um, I've had to re-record the uh, zinc and uh, zinc plus oxygen. Uh, so we're going to make some zinc oxide here. Um, the previous recording didn't work um, well because the zinc completely oxidised before I managed to get it into the oxygen. You see that nice bright um, colour there showing you that zinc oxide is being made. Now I'm going to remove the deflagrating spoon from the reaction. This is uh, zinc oxide. It's bright yellow uh, when it's hot. And when it cools down, it will go white.
Right. Uh, next up is magnesium. Okay, so I've got some pieces of magnesium ribbon. Now you may have seen this before. Okay, um, I'm going to place some of this magnesium on the spoon. Um, I, I could, if I wanted to, um, use a set of tongs um, and, and dangle it in there. But for safety reasons, I'm, I'm actually just going to light these on, on the uh, duffel bag spoon. Okay, and uh, then I'm going to place them down into the thing. Now, um, <clears throat> magnesium is pretty reactive. And if you've seen this before, you'll know that this is quite a bright... Um, it produces quite a bright white flame. Uh, so if you're um, were watching this in reality, uh, I'd either get you to look through kind of uh, your your fingers or, or try and squint when you're watching it, or possibly even use some blue glass to protect your eyesight. So if you're answering this in the exam, you're going to be really careful to protect your eyesight. So um, <clears throat> that could be one of the safety features. Now it takes a little bit of time just to get the magnesium to react. But once it reacts, uh, you're going to see a really brilliant white um, flame. Well, not so much flame, but uh, a lot of light is released there. Which tells us that this is an exothermic reaction. So a lot of people think just of exothermic ones as uh, releasing heat, uh, but we should think of them as releasing energy, and that energy could be um, given, out, given out as light. Um, so as soon as I get this to uh, light, I'll put them into the... Okay, so we're just about there. <coughs> okay, and that brilliant white light there um, uh, just shows you quite how uh, reactive magnesium is uh, when it reacts with oxygen. Okay, so that's magnesium and uh, oxygen. Now, if I turn this down, I might just be able to show you, okay, uh, that that's fully reacted there. Okay, so that is, you can see a whole, a whole lot of white magnesium oxide. It looks very, very different from the original magnesium ribbon, okay, which is both silver and really, really shiny. Okay, so that's magnesium ribbon before it's been burnt and afterwards we get this lovely white magnesium oxide. Okay, so that's magnesium oxide. Finally, we're gonna look at sodium. Now sodium is really, really reactive. So um, our sodium has uh, actually been placed in some paraffin oil, okay, and that stops it reacting with uh, the sort of small amounts of oxygen in the air. And that's really, really important um, because otherwise, um, by the time we came to do any reactions with sodium, we wouldn't have uh, any sodium left um, because it would have all reacted. So what I'm going to do first of all is just take a tiny bit of that oil off of the sodium. So I'm just going to use this uh, bit of blue um, roll here just to remove some of the paraffin oil. Okay, and I'll just show you uh, a bit of this sodium here. Okay, so there's the sodium. Um, it's a little bit shiny. Okay, but um, if I were to slice into it, which I'm not going to do, but if I were to slice into it, I could get that to, um, uh, I, I would be able to show you that it was really, really shiny underneath. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that sodium into this uh, deflagrating spoon, okay, and uh, I'm going to be very, very careful not to blind myself uh, with this. Um, okay. So, uh, this is sodium. It shouldn't need a huge amount of persuasion. I'm just going to sort out my workbench here. Okay, um, and this is sodium. Okay, so it's just going to take a little couple of seconds to get sodium to react. Once it reacts, you should notice it's, it should be reasonably quick. Okay, sodium's got fire there. Okay, and that's sodium just burning pretty happily in oxygen. And you'll just see it starting to spark up with uh, quite a lot of light there. Okay, so that's a, a much, much smaller piece of sodium than I placed 
than the piece of magnesium was. Okay, so there's uh, a lot less um, burning air, but you can still see just how bright um, that uh, reaction got as a measure of how reactive it is. Okay, uh, and if we uh, have a look at the sodium metal that remains, uh, it's now no longer sodium metal, it's now sodium oxide. Okay, and you can see it's reacted there to form a uh, kind of yellowy white uh, solid. So, if we were to place these reactions in order, okay, we should have copper as the least reactive, okay, and sodium as the most reactive. Iron appeared to be more reactive than it probably was because the iron wall that we used had a really large surface area.